Hold on. Okay, guys. So this is a simulation of Cambridge 7 test 3. So I will be the unfortunate guinea pig. So uh, one of my students, my Esquadra, is going to be doing the question. So let's pretend that she's the examiner and I am the examinee. All right, my. All right. Good evening. I am evening. Mary Esquadra. May I have your full name, please? Uh, my full name is Oscar Torre Jr. Although uh, my friends actually call me Juni, which is extracted from the fact that I'm the junior of my father. So feel free to call me Juni. All right. Okay. We will now proceed to the part one of the speaking test. Okay. I would like to ask: Have you ever been in a in a very cold weather? When? Oh, okay. Uh, that's quite interesting. Uh, you know, I grew up, I was born and I grew up in Manila, but uh, somewhere towards my middle years, I moved to Baguio City, which is like 250 kilometers north of Manila. It's a city that's located up in the mountains and quite popular uh, vacation spot for summer. It's the summer capital of the Philippines. Uh, temperature there ranges from around uh, 25 degrees and can go as low as 10 degrees at night. So I spent 10 years of my life there and uh, that was primarily because of work where I, uh, I, where I work in a number of universities there. And that's where I also began teaching IELTS. So yes, the answer to your question is yes. Oh, okay, interesting. How often is the weather cold where you come from? Uh, Unfortunately, the Philippines, of course, is an equatorial country, very tropical, so temperature is not cold at all. So uh, really cotton is the thing in the Philippines, except for that particular city that I mentioned, which is Baguio City. So uh, we in the Philippines are actually quite accustomed, acclimated to hot weather. All right. Are some parts of your country colder than others? Uh, yeah, I wish I could live in Baguio City all my life. However, Manila is the capital, so I am forced to come back to Manila where all the opportunities are. But, uh, really, uh, if I had a choice, I would really love to just retire and die in Baguio City. I mean, that's that place is actually quite cosmopolitan, very modern, very urban. That's the, that's the only cold place I know that's really worth living in. It's a lot of amenities, very modern. You won't get lost. It's like a mini Manila. And that's just about it. It's just Baguio City. All right. For the last question, uh, would you prefer to live in a hot place or a cold place? Why? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm sure if you ask any Filipino, I mean, they would rather be staying in a cold place. I know a lot of Westerners, they don't like cold weather. But uh, since we were born and raised in such a hot climate, and of course, naturally, we would migrate towards colder countries. And in fact, it's, it's like a bucket list for Filipinos to actually experience snow, which I haven't experienced myself. So I guess that explains my motivation. I really would like to move to colder climates where, you know, our clothing is really on layers rather than sticking to just one piece of shirt all the time. That's really a dream. Okay, that's the end of our part one. And we will proceed to part two, wherein you will be given a topic. You have two minutes to prepare. and I, One minute to prepare and two minutes for you to talk about this topic. Okay. You can see my screen, right? Can you, see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Is my screen being shared? Okay. I will send the topic now. Um, yeah. October group, sir. Legal. Okay. Okay, you're one minute. Uh, did you see it? Okay. Oh, all right. So, <laughs> yeah, if you want, you can begin the time right now. My, right. Your one minute okay. preparation starts now. You have the timer, Mai? Yes, sir. I'll just I'll click on my timer as well. 
the timer. It's not running. It's hanging. <laughs> okay. My hold on, hold on with the time. Sorry. Oh, there it goes. C C C. All right. Start. So there. So I am supposed to describe a party that I enjoy. Oh, oh my God. Maybe I'm part three, sir. That's the one? Maybe I'm part three. I didn't... Uh, no, I didn't see the part three. Okay, sir. Okay. Well, I, I... Ah, whose party it was? Gosh. That's part one. Oh my god. Hindi pa ako sa part one na. Part. Uh, what was it celebrating? Where the party was held? Who went to it? What people did in the party? And. One. Here, one minute of preparation. Yes, up. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So I am about to describe a party that I went to and that I enjoyed. Uh, this party actually happened way back when, when I was younger. Uh, this was held uh, during my college years when uh, one of my batchmates, one of my rich batchmates, actually, who actually owns a resort and a yacht to, to boot, and so we were invited to this resort and we decided to stay in the, the rooftop of this yacht. And that's where we actually had this party where we had drinks. The, the yacht was actually anchored on the shore. Uh, it wasn't a particular celebrate, uh, celebration uh, except for the fact that we were just uh, commemorating the end of the school year. So we all gathered in a a bus of some sort that we rented and then we all went there as a batch. Uh, when exactly uh, this happened, the year I actually forgot and I'd rather not say because it was a long time ago. And the people who were at this party were uh, practically the entire batch. So that's like uh, uh, a number of, that's like two classes of students. So that's like uh, around uh, 60 people. And uh, it was really a, a clean party, so there was a lot of drinking. In fact, I remember we ran out of drinks towards the end, but uh, there was a lot of drinking, no, no drugs involved, of course, and then uh, a lot of pictures, a lot of uh, laughing and smiling, and towards the end of the night, we actually slept on the roof of that yacht. And uh, I really enjoyed it because it doesn't really happen much that you get to celebrate a party on top of a yacht. I don't think that's get, or ever going to happen again, but uh, it's, it's as fresh in my mind as, uh, as if it happened just yesterday. So uh, uh, inadvertently, this is the only thing I would mention if uh, somebody would okay. ask me this uh, quality I enjoy. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. Here two minutes is up. Um, we will now proceed to part three, where okay. we will also talk about the topic related to part two. Uh, what are the main reasons why people organize family parties in your country? Ah, uh, yeah, because you know, family is really, it's really a celebration of your roots. I mean, it's a, it's really a definition of who you are. It's it's a gathering of people who are close to your heart. So, uh, I guess family should do that quite often. And in fact, we do it quite often, especially during this season, during Christmas. There are a lot of reunions. And people get to see each other uh, after an entire year not having done so. So I guess the answer to that is really because uh, it is something that keeps us grounded and makes us uh, feel welcome in the world and uh, makes life worth living. Okay, very good. In some places, people spend a lot of money on parties that celebrate special family events. Is this ever true in your country? Do you think this is a good trend or a bad trend? Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, you know, it's really interesting. Like, uh, of course, everybody has to uh, take a uh, factor in the uh, what happened with COVID. But pre-COVID, like, 
yes, we did used to have a lot of events together as a family or celebrating somebody's birthday. But I noticed towards the the last decade or so, things have become very hectic and busy. I don't know if it's just me or uh, it's really the trend. But uh, what I noticed is that families would only gather together like once in a year, like during Christmas and any other event suddenly has become, you know, it has fallen by the wayside. It's no longer as important. And I guess that's because of the stressors of life. Everybody's so busy with work. And so inadvertently, uh, other than Christmas, we end up actually getting together during funerals, which is really sad. So those are the only two things I remember in the last few years where families have really gotten together. And that's because, I guess, because of the, I mean, it's the reality, so urban living, everything's so hectic. There's so much traffic everywhere. Yeah. Do you think it's, this is a good trend or a bad trend? Uh, yeah, definitely it's a bad trend. Like, I mean, we should see family members as, as often as possible, but uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, the circumstances have prevented us from doing so. so uh, in reality, uh, even when we spend our birthdays together, we actually choose to spend it with friends rather than with families. So it has really weakened the ties between families and it's not really their fault. It's really the fault of the stressors of life, you know, the complexities of urban living and all that stuff. It's, uh, it's something we really need to go back to. All right. Are there many differences between family parties and parties given by friends? Why do you think this is? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, parties between friends are really more rowdy, more noisy. It's more fun in a way. Uh, family gatherings are really more subdued. It's more subtle. It's really a lot of talk. So I guess the, the difference is the fact that we are in the company of people of different age brackets. So if you're you're in the company of your elders, then you tend to be more respectful and to be more polite, you know. And uh, however, when you're in the company of friends, that's when you can let your hair down and let loose, right? So I guess there's a difference between the two. So um, certainly there are two aspects of our personality. The one that's in family reunions where we are more behaved and there are, there's the aspect of our personality where we are you know, uh, we are in the company of friends and we can, like, we can just let loose. Right. What kind of national celebration do you have in your country? A national celebrations. Yeah, everybody has to mention Christmas, of course. That's really like a national celebration by itself. And then, of course, the days that follow Christmas are de facto holidays, like, you have a uh, result day coming on the 30th and New Year's Eve coming on the 31st and of course New Year's Day on the 1st. So it's that particular week that's like a long holiday for families to get together. But apart from that, uh, the other national holidays commemorate the heroism of our uh, of the people who, who fought for the country and did heroic acts. And apart from that, there is also the religious holiday, which is uh, Holy Week, of course, that begins with Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and then all the way up to Easter Sunday. So that's generally a time for get-togethers or for vacation time as well. So in a nutshell, it's really, I mean, you can just, uh, I, I think you can just uh, classify it according to three. There are the uh, Hero Week holiday, the holidays for the heroes, and then there is the Holy Week holidays, and of course, the Christmas holidays. Okay. Who tends to enjoy national celebrations more? Young people or old people? Why? Oh, I see. <laughs> uh, you know, in the Philippines, I mean, I'm talking as far as Manila is concerned. You know, uh, I mean, Manila is a stressful city to live in. So I guess everybody just appreciates the fact that they don't have work or school. So uh, whether it's the young or the old, they're just celebrating the fact that they don't have to go through the rigors of going through the daily grind of going to school or work and back. I mean, that's very stressful by this. So I guess everybody just enjoys these holidays. And it's curious that nobody really remembers why the holiday was there to begin with. 
it's just an opportunity to rest, to be, uh, to be away from home or school. It's sad, but true. Okay. Uh, why do you think, some people think that national celebrations are a waste of government money. Would you agree or disagree with this? Why? Uh, uh, you know, I think the people who say that are those who believe that national celebrations incur government spending in the form of a huge parade, for example, like the Independence Day Parade or uh, anything that entails a lot of government effort. But in the Philippines, it's not really the case. We don't really have, you know, that annual parade for Independence Day. Uh, not, sim not like the other countries have. So I guess there's really not much spending that government does. I mean, all you have is a flag ceremony by our leaders and that's it. And then everybody's uh, going about by their own business. So as far as the Philippines is concerned, um, well, wait, wait, I think I remember the festivals. I mean, I mean, if you can consider that as a holiday, so government does spend a lot of money for festivals. Like in Baguio City, there is the Panagbenga Festival that happens like February to March. Uh, there's a lot of spending for that. But uh, I don't think it's a waste of money because it brings in a lot of tourists and a lot of revenue for Baguio City. The city is really known for its tourism. So Panagbenga is really a big time of the year. In fact, it's the biggest festival in the country as we speak. It's not a waste of money, if you ask me. Okay, very good. That concludes our speaking test and okay. congratulations. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Uh, stop the recording, guys. <laughs>